we begin the recording as well so we would see the recording after this point so let's say for example i want to study the effect of x z and w that is some of the variables uh, on a dependent variable y and if i am using one equation that is a general equation in a simple linear equation so i would see for example a coefficient matrix that is a b and that contains for example the coefficients of x z and w individually with an error term e so because i would have a time series data and uh, i would have for example one country data it, it exactly i just talk about that so then there might be some problems and maybe uh, i would see that most of the times the variables that if i plot it on a time scale for example if i just try to uh, plot that uh, on a time scale and all the variables are individually plotted here and for example let's say if all the variables are behaving like this in a time series pattern and even if there is no correlation of there is no specific theoretical relationship between these three variables but when i have a time series data and i just run a simple linear regression then i would see that there would be a significant relationship between and the effect of these variables will be significant on y so that is commonly for example we talk about that it should be uh, a spurious regression because i know that theoretically this relationship is not possible but because of the technical reasons with time series data we would have uh, this kind of the relationship present in our data set and we would be for example inferring in a run line so we would not be able to for example infer with uh, efficiency and consistency i would not be for example trusting that kind of hypothesis testing when the relationship is not truly possible but we can see that relationship is existing so the time series problem for example with this kind of the problem in the spuriosity of the relationship was identified earlier in the 70s by engel and similarly other researchers and they developed a new approach to find out for example the true relationship between these variables so when this is the case i would not be able to use a simple linear regression model for the time series data where i would not be able to see the true relationship so based on a simple reason i would for example define a new system where i would be using a multi system equation where each of the variable in the system in the study is a dependent variable and all the other variables are a part of that equation so let's say for example when i write one equation from here so let's say if i just write the equation of y and that should be for example part of a, a simple equation where i would put all the other variables for example in this system now you can see that i have modified the system and i have included all the variables in the same system they, while there is for example that dependent variable and that is also present in the list of the independent variables so i would specify more technically and how we would actually do that and similarly i would add the other equation and that should be for example exactly the same pattern and i would just for example type that i would just copy that and then just put it here and similarly i would use w and and so on the last equation so i can see that if i have a multiple equation with the same variables when all the variables that is the dependent and independent variables are the now in a dependent variable in each of the equation where all my variables are also part of the independent variables and these are not independent equations but i have to solve this system if i just look into the pdf i can see that i have rewritten these equations in a different form and actually this is the form of equation that is this equation is actually this system of the equation that i have written very simply so we can just for example write the dependent variable with small y that we can see here and similarly i have summed up all these parts so for example this is a and the rest of the part of the equation that is actually this part is written in the, in the summation of the other components and so on because we can write the same thing in other parts of the equation so i have just interpreted exactly in a simpler way so when this is the system and i have to estimate that equation very simply like this i can identify that estimation of a simple equation where the independent variables are used to identify the effect on y and in this equation i would be a, a little bit a challenge 
how to find out the exact effect of the variables x, z, and w with y. So this part of the equation becomes like, for example, a challenge whenever we are talking about this kind of studies. Um, and uh, the, the, the solution was actually developed that uh, uh, a VECM model was used. And we would see, for example, actually what is VECM and how it is working. So identifying the issues with this and estimating this system and how it looks like exactly. So let me tell you, for example, if I just use Y here and then Y again here, I would be able to identify that if I use the same variable in this system, and if I just assume that it is one equation and that is independent equation like this OLS equation, I would not be able to estimate this. So, and because I have to use the whole system of the equations to estimate jointly and simultaneously, so I can use, for example, I would use T here, and that means that we can use multiple time period, that is the legs actually, and we can just define the equation to be like this. And we can use multiple legs of the same variables with other variables. And for example, I can use last three years data, last four years data, and so on one by one. And I can add it to this equation and similarly to this equation and so on to all other equations. So that system would actually become exactly like this. If I just, for example, represent it, we can just add the part of the equations to multiple equations and so on with the first variable uh, up to multiple equations like multiple legs and similarly with the other variable with multiple legs and so on all the other variables one by one i can rewrite the same equation with multiple legs and i can identify for example now the error terms would be actually different that should be one and two and three and so on because this error term is not exactly this error term because the equation is different but we should assume that something on the part of the equations and i would do the same assumptions for example if i just talk about the assumption of uh, autocorrelation for this regression and similarly i can talk about the autocorrelation of the residuals here as well and there should be one assumption that some of these error terms should be equal in the ols the assumption that is usually violated in the time series data when we actually apply the time series uh, 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 that is the OLS that is a simple linear regression model to a time series data we find that most of the times the autocorrelation problem will be very severe and same we identify the same pattern one thing that we need to identify is that we actually assume that there should be no autocorrelation but let me tell you that these residuals should be or may be correlated to each other so for example e, if e1 is correlated to e2 that is not exactly the definition of autocorrelation we would be defining autocorrelation is the correlation of this error term with its previous values and similarly autocorrelation will be the e2 with its previous values and e3 with its previous values and so on with e4 with other values and similarly i would be finding whether there is an heteroscedasticity or there might be any endogeneity if i just talk about endogeneity here so most of the times we will find that these variables will be dependent on each other because of the time series nature of the data is i plotted earlier I can find out the same thing but here this system is actually solving the same problem none of the variable i can assume here that these variables should be exogenous but i would see that these are not actually exogenous that is my assumption but when i talk about the same thing in this setup i do not assume that these variables are actually exogenous i know that all these variables are endogenous as well so that means that all the variables in this setup is treat it like exogenous. If I want to add any exogenous variable, then it should not be part of this part of the equation. It should be, for example, independent. If I just add u here, and I can, for example, add another v here. And similarly, I can add s here. So we can add, for example, specifically different variables to different equations, and that might need a very strong mathematical modeling for us. So let's say I would assume that I add only one variable to all the equation so the system begins for example becomes very simple for me and i can identify that now the system is for example containing endogenous variable as well and it also contains exogenous variable as well so when there is no exogenous variable in this setup like this we have for example the earlier so that is for example simple var and when i add for example this uh, exogenous variable as well then it becomes VAR XM. So initially, for example, in VAR, all variables are endogenous. And when I have, for example, this setup, then we call it VAR X. 
because this x is actually representing an uh, independent variable to be exogenous. So let me make the equation very really specific. So now I can see that I have endogenous variables plus one variable is exogenous. But if I, for example, have a simple VAR, then we cannot put this U here. So we would see, for example, only the endogenous variable and the error terms with the dependent variable. So I would have to estimate this part of the equation and I would assume that whether there is any specific situation or not. So I can, for example, use a setup of equation and if I have to use VARX, then what I have to do and if I have to use VAR, then what I have to use. So I should be very careful with selection of this kind of the techniques. Whenever I'm talking about multiple variables and multiple equations in a time series setup, then I should remember that simple OLS will not be feasible to estimate the relationship or the effect of some variables on the other variables. And there are multiple issues that we need to remember. And how to proceed with that, for example, I would use all the variables one by one and then I have to identify the key issues with the same model. So let me start with e views. I would, for example, identify my key variables in the equation. I would use almost three variables. And for example, let's say these three variables are GFC are four variables. I would just open it as a group and I would plot it, for example, initially to see what is the pattern of the variables. So let's say, for example, actually a single line graph, I can use multiple graphs as well. And I can, for example, use any other relationship between the two. I would use line and symbol and I can see the pattern of the variables. And I can guess, for example, the exact relationship of whether there is any relationship or not. I can see that these three variables, that is GDP, debt, and GFC, are looking exactly similar. I can find out the same relationship and that I can guess that there might be a long run or short run relationship. But when I talk about the trade proportion, that is the ratio of the exports and imports to the GDP, so that might not be, for example, behaving exactly the other three variables are doing. So guessing a, a linear relationship or simply a long run relationship between these kind of variables would be very complex for us. So for example, if I had only these three variables, not with the trade, then I might guess that there is a linear relationship between the variables over the long run. That is just, for example, a very weak assertion. It is an assumption that is not a formal test from the graphs. So graph, graphical interpretation is exactly like a layman interpretation. We just need to see what happens. We do not need to confirm that it is actually happening something. And then what I have to proceed would be identifying whether there is any unit root or no unit root. I would just use one variable and then open it as a spreadsheet, click on view and then unit root, identify which one of the unit root I'm going to use, for example. So let's say I'm using ADF test and with a level. And then initially I'm just using with intercept. I can use any of these options and the interpretation is same. And I just need to see whether I need to use intercept, trend or intercept or none of the two. So I can just, for example, use the simple options. And I would be able to identify this P value from the result or the critical value. And then I can just look into this critical table, the tables, of tabulated values of the, for example, test statistic and the P values of, and the null hypothesis is given. So if the P values is less than 0 0.05, then I can identify that this unit root hypothesis should be accepted. If this is greater than 0.05, then it should be accepted. If this is less than 0.05, then I would have to reject this null hypothesis. So because my p-value in this test is that it is greater than 0.05, so I have to accept this hypothesis so I can conclude that that is actually a unit root. So I would go back and then click on e-view unit root and change the level to the first reference and similarly do the same test. Now I can see the p-value is less than 0.05 and the null hypothesis can be rejected. So I can very easily conclude that one of my variable is um, uh, I1 or I0. So I would just, for example, go up. So my second step was unit root of, and I just, for example, use whether my variable is one, I1 or I0 in I1 or I2. So I would just, for example, identify how I actually do the same thing. So I have to make sure that each of my variable is in a unit root or no unit root. So I can see that my actual variable debt is actually I1. Why I did it? So for example, I would say because the level is 
has a unit root and first difference has no unit root. So if this is the case, then I would conclude that my variable is actually uh, I1. So for example, if it was a stationary uh, in level, then I would call it to zero. So let me uh, rewrite the three observations, for example, the idea. So for example, level stationary, or I would say level not unit root on, because, and then it is also called level stationary. So I would name it, for example, I1, I0. And similarly, if it was a difference of stationary, so that might also mean that um, it is actually unit root in this. After taking the first difference, for example, there is no unit root. So I can just call it, for example, should be equal to I1. And if, for example, if it was a second difference of stationary, and I would just name it, for example, I2. And now I have to see for each variable in my model, these three, and then I have to conclude. So I can conclude for that. After looking into the two observations that it was unit root in the level and uh, stationary in the first difference. So not unit root is actually stationary. So I would be talking interchangeably. And similarly, I would do it for all the other variables one by one and just look into, for example, that then do that with the first difference sum and we can just see it is also unit root of, and similarly I would do it for the other variables and unit root for the first difference and it is also stationary and similarly I would do it with the trade and for the trade I would just go to with the first difference sum because I know that it was not exactly flowing upward or downward but it was flowing up and then downward so let me see whether it was unit root in the level or not unit root in the level so I can see that it is exactly the same thing um, and I would just for example look into the first difference as well and again we can see that it is very strongly stationary in the first difference so after this test and I did it very quickly uh, because the recording will be showing you the same steps again so I can just find it for example all my variables that is JDP is equal to I1 and similarly GFC is also I1 and trade is also I1. So I can conclude very easily that all my variables in a model that is for example the depth JDP, JFC and trade are actually I1. So that is for example a simple conclusion that all the variables are integrated at the same order. It might be possible that some of these variables will not be a, a unit root in the first level or the second level and so on. So we might get, for example, either one of these or some combination of these. So let's say, for example, with the first set of the variables, I find it that all my variables are I1. So I can say that they have the same order of integration that is I1. And then I can, for example, identify the same thing in eViews in Strata as well. For example, I have opened the data again, the same data I have opened and I can go to statistic. I would also use codes, but I can go to statistic and then time series and I can just find it whether I have any unit root here or no unit root. So I can see that when I just click on time series and then on, on the test sum menu, I can find all the other tests that I can use. So I would use augmented degree folder that is ADF test sum and I would select my variable that is dead. And I can, for example, use the same thing whether I need to use a, a constant in the equation. So if I just check here, that means that I would uh, remove that constant from the equation, whether I need to add trend or I just need to, for example, drop term in the equation as well. So I can just, for example, use any of the equations and I would be just using the same and same but And I can just use, for example, multiple legs as well. So I would just, for example, use two legs or three legs and then just click on that. And it gives me the same thing, for example, a critical value. So I can, for example, see that uh, it is 1.85 and mostly I can see that at 1% or 5%, I can see that my test statistic is actually greater than in minus 1.95. So we can just identify the same thing and we can look into whether my critical test is actually greater than absolute value of the test and so on. So I can just do that um, and I can just, for example, if I just remove that no constant and only legs, I can see that when I just click from statistics, time series, 
and then test with ADF, I can see that Stata has reported um, a code for me. I can just use this code anytime later and by modifying it and identifying the relevant options. So for example, I remove the no constant, I change the legs and I can just, for example, identify the other options. And as I already mentioned, for example, with no constant, I actually did not see the same thing, but here I can find out that the critical value is greater than actually the negative statistic and the p-value is 0.98. So we can just conclude exactly as I did earlier and I can conclude the same thing that it is a unit root and for example, I can just find out whether the first difference. So when the first difference, I just use the D dot before this variable name, the stata would identify that it is a time series operator. So I would, for example, use the D dot for the first difference. And I would just, for example, click the same thing with no constant and then simply with a constant with two legs and just using different variants and variants of the same code. And I can find out the value. So I can see that now the test reports that there is no unit root because I have removed, uh, I know that the unit root hypothesis of the Dickey Fuller is the same thing and as we did in e views. And now I have to reject the same hypothesis. And similarly, I can use many other tests in e views. So, for example, if I just click on view of the windows of the result of the unit root, I can find out there are multiple other tests like DF, GLS, and similarly Phillips, and similarly KPSS. So I can find out the same in Strata as well. So I can, for example, use that P parent. So that is for the Phillips and parent test. I can use, for example, KPSS. That is for the KPSS test. And I can just, for example, use a simple version of the test to identify different results with that. So I can use a DFGLS that we already identified in eViews as well, that it is exactly DFGLA. So that, that test, that is ERS, Elliot, and, and similarly others, that is Elliot at all reported statistic. We can just do that and here with the DFGLS and we can just report the results. And similarly, I can use a P pattern as well. And very simply, we can find out the test results. And we have to do the same thing and we just need to conclude the same order that all the variables either reported in eViews or in Statum. We can just find out that the variables are I1 and that is uh, an evidence that all the variables are I1 that is the same order of integration and that is the first symptom that is the first evidence that there is for integration as well. So I would go to eViews again and I would just close these windows because I have already reported my results and then I would for example click on my, my dependent variable and one by one on my independent variable and just open it is a VAR system and I can see some options here for example is I already mentioned while I was talking about the basics of VAR here I can see that if you selected all the variables are endogenous if I want to add some exogenous variable then I can just for example mention it so let's say uh, I think that NVAL is for example so that is for example IND so this is actually an exogenous variable I can just put it here but that is not actually exogenous so I would just for example use it here and I can just add for example so how many legs I can begin with the four legs or five legs but it should be kept in mind that whenever I'm uh, running a time series regression and I, I add more and more variables into the endogenous list of the equation and I have selected number of observations that is 30 years or 35 years of the data but that would not allow me, for example, to identify the true model. So let's say, for example, I have selected so that uh, I propose, I expect that there should be some warning because I have added four legs and I have an, uh, an exogenous variable and I have four endogenous variables. And for example, if it was allowable, so if we would get the results, otherwise we would have to report this issue. For example, this is the problem, so we need to solve it like this. So I can see that, uh, sorry, that is not, for example, the true variable name. I will just open it again and let me identify that is NVAL that is NVA. So that is NVA and same options again. I can see the same results are produced for me because we have 34, uh, we have four endogenous variable, one endogenous, one exogenous variable in 34 observations. So now you can see that as I already mentioned uh, on my equation, 
that if we add uh, an exogenous variable, it should be added to the same equations, all the equations similarly. So I would just, for example, u here, and simply that u would be added to all the other variables as well, as I did here, that is called VARX. And this VARX can show that when I added industry value added to my equations, and it is in the equations of all the variables. So I can just, for example, use the same equations here. And I can do that in state up to again with statistic. And now because I'm using multiple time series, so I would use multivariate time series and then I can just click on vector auto regression. And I would select all my variables, for example, that is date. And I would add GFC, trade, and simply GDP. And I would also add the same in industry value added up. That is actually uh, exogenous variable as well. And for example, let's say I add variable legs are to be four, and I would just estimate the system. So again, I can see that industry value added is part of all the equations, and I can see that now it is part of the equations separately because in Strata there is a difference of the reporting and e views. I can see that the independent variable is in the column header and the independent variables that is legs and legs of the other independent variables in the model of the endogenous variables in the model are actually given on the row headers so for example if this is my equation of gfc these should be the endogenous variable now but i have to report the coefficients for that and similarly for example if i want to use the gdp equation i can just use it like this and once we are done for example with the var I would be, for example, based on my conclusion that all my variables are actually co-integrated, I can just click on view and then test on co-integration test. And there are multiple parts of the equation because you might remember that uh, we estimated four, four different equations for four different variables. And that setup actually gives me a lot of different uh, options, for example, whether there is the co-integrated equation. And let me, for example, demonstrate that very simply with the, that uh, writing tool so I might uh, be able for example let's say if I just use this I would be able to identify for example my time series variables were reported like this and I would just for example use x sum z and w so all the variables were like moving upward and I can just for example produce three or more variables like this and I can identify that uh, this graph and similarly the graph from our A views output can show that there might be some linear combinations and actually this linear combination might be of different possibilities um, like if I look into this equation I can just propose that some parts of these equations and some variables within these equations might be generally for example let's say I can find out that uh, y and x are linearly dependent on each other they can make a linear equation to each other and similarly, I can find out that X and W can also be a, a linear combination of each other. So we can just, for example, propose different uh, subsets of the variables to be linearly dependent on each other that might make a linear combination to define a new variable. If that is the case, then this VAR setup will not be working exactly what we proposed earlier. So that means that we have to justify and we have to resolve these issues before estimating a VAR system. So the co-integration is actually, for example, if I have this setup VAR, let me remove the lines. And my assumption that all these variables are actually endogenous, but I did not assume that they also have linear combinations to each other. So for example, I cannot combine these two variables linearly to make one. So I can, for example, if I proposed that these two variables are linearly related to each other, I can just make one equation and just put it here in my part of the equation will be different. And similarly, if I had these two variables are also related to each other they are also linearly combined and they have a linear combination to each other so i might be not having the exact var as i defined earlier so this is why we usually need to identify co-integration because the var might not be feasible to identify these kind of features in the model so i would just for example go with that and then identify that equation so and that these linear combinations of the different variables might have intercepts might have for example if I just look into the first option, it says no interceptor trend in CER test VAR because I'm using a VAR setup to test this equation. Because in this setup, I've actually proposed that all these variables might be linearly dependent or not linearly dependent. So here I have to see the same thing. 
whether there is intercept in the CE, that is the linear combination of two or more than two variables in the VAR model, or even the test VAR, I can identify. Similarly, intercept, no trend, and all the other options. For example, I can identify the third option is the default option, that is intercept or no trend in CE and test VAR. So it means that there is a simple VAR system setup where I just, for example, put A and there is no trade in the equation. And even I, I can skip this uh, exogenous variable as well because that would be exogenous and that might not be making any linear combination with that. So I would, for example, use the third option. I can change the legs and similarly, I can just remove the end values as well. I can, let's say, for example, I add only three here and I can identify, for example, other ABC restrictions and so on. So I would just do with the, the simple option and just click on that. And if, at least as I proposed earlier, there, there might be no linear combinations. There might be one linear combination. There might be multiple linear combinations. If there was no linear combination of the given variable in the VAR, we would see that this result would interpret that there is no point integration or zero point integrating vectors. Because in this set, we have found that there is one point integration. So it means that at least all these variables or some of these variables are at least once they are linearly related to each other, there might be one linear combination. So that means that if that linear combination is present in the equation, we would not be able to trust this VAR for inferences, and we can just identify a new set of equation that is exactly the VECM. So let's say, for example, after verifying that there is VECM, I can, for example, look into this PDF to identify actually what is the type of equation for VECM. So let's say, for example, we see, okay, so that is the part of the equation. And I can identify that that is a somehow different structure of the equation. I would just define a set of equation. Instead of giving you a formal sense, I have to redesign this set of equation into one, where, for example, my dependent variable, that is y, should be in a dy. For example, that should be dy here. And for example, I would make now x of z w a part of this equation. And simply I would use legs of the same x of z and w. And simply I can add differences as well. That should be, for example, x of z and w. And simply that is the ec and plus error term. So why I added this ec? because I knew from the cointegration test that some of these variables would be actually linearly combined to each other. So my equation should be redesigned to this. And now I can identify that it should include, for example, level variables. Why level variables? Because in this set of equation, I found that the variables are related to each other in levels. And I just redesigned that because I have to find out actually this equation from this set of the variables because I have to solve that mathematically to find out what is actually this linear combination of the variables and then for example I would be using this set of the equation as well so that might mean to me a long run equation why because it is in levels and that would be the part of the equation that is in levels but that is in the differences so I would be actually redesigning my VECM to identify in that part. I, I do not say that that is exactly our VECM, but all VECM models are looking very closely to this. They contain some, for example, level variables and legs of the level variables. And maybe we would not see that somehow this level variables are there. We would just see the legs of the level variables and the differences with legs of the differences of the level variable, the difference variables, and then the uh, that we should call it, for example, a integrating vector. That is actually the linear combination of the variables possible in this set of the VER and the residual. So we would just look into that. So the rest of the discussion is exactly, for example, coefficients of the variables and inference on that. I would just go back to the same results in point integration and just click on E views. And when I, for example, do the same thing, I would just click on the estimate. So you can just, for example, do the point integration. That is, for example, identification of the cointegration vectors. But because I have to find out the VECM, so I would click on estimate. And then I, instead of unrestricted VAR, I would click on VEC. And now I can see the same thing. I would remove some options. Let's say, for example, I'm just using two. And there are two other options that we need to cover later on.
and now I can see that how many uh, point integrating vectors that were reported. If I just look into my results, I can see that there is one vector, so I would just leave one. If you find out, for example, in some other practices that there are two or more point integrating vectors, and we just, for example, mentioned two here, we would see that uh, eViews or Stata would report something that is very really strange to us. They, for example, eViews would normalize one of the variables, not one of the variables, but two of the variables will be normalized and we will lose coefficient of that variable. But my research question is actually similar like this. I want to find out the effect of X, Z and W on Y. And when I, for example, use two and some of the two, instead of, for example, this, I would say that instead of that, my relationship would be looking like this. That should be W. So actually my topic was X, Z, W on Y, but now if I just use these two coefficients here, I would lose my information from the results. So I would not be using this type of the results. And I would just and always use one co-integrating vector. Even if my uh, test of co-integration after VER reveals that there are two or more co-integrating vectors. So I can use the same thing and I can just interpret it and I can just look into my results. And if I just remember my words that um, I use this setup of the equation, and I also said that we would normalize when I talk about co-integration. So that means that whenever I would solve this set of the VAR model, and then I have to, for example, the coefficient of the dependent variable. If I just look into VAR, I can find out that there will be coefficient of the dependent variable of each equation as well. So that means that we have to remove these coefficients from the model, and we have to resolve that, we redesign that, and so that coefficient should be one, for example, for that. It means that, that the coefficient will not be one. That is just, for example, the normalization process or the mathematical process to solve this system would be one. So I would, for example, identify that there would be legs of the level variables. There will be differences of the variables and so on. But you would also see that as I had multiple dependent variables in this part of the equation, and I only use D, for example, Y, that was my main variable. So I selected Y specifically as my dependent variable. Otherwise, I would see that these set of equations are this set of the results with the legs of the label and differences of the variables and similarly co-integrating vector would give me different set of the results. So I can just look into e views. I can see that the first co-integration vector that I already said that actually this set is a linear combination of the variables and e views would give us actually the coefficients of the long run from the same co-integrating vector. So this is actually the long run relationship that we can identify. And one point that you need to remember when you have to write about this set of the equation that is the long run relationship between the variables, we need to change the sign of the coefficients of this equation, this part of the equation. So my long run equation would be equal to, for example, that it should be y here. So let me just make it small. So that, for example, that should be y here. And I can see that um, my C is here positive. So I would be, for example, writing a negative here. And similarly, I would look into this part that is also negative. And similarly, this is also positive. Uh, so I would just write the first three coefficient should be negative. But um, this is actually negative. So I would make it positive. So that means that I have three coefficients in my regression equations of the long run is positive. So in my interpretation, I would be using it as a negative coefficient. And the, this coefficient, when it is negative, I would just use it as a positive coefficient. So I can identify it very simply for the long run. And for the short run, I would, for example, use the equation that is actually with the differences. So for example, if I am using that is my dependent variable, then it is the short run equation that I can use and I can identify the effect of it, uh, one variable or the other variables or of the few variables and the other variables. So that is exactly, for example, I will be talking about what is actually X, Z, and W, and then on my Y. So I can write about my Y variables. So whenever we estimate, for example, let me very quickly summarize that part. So whenever I'm talking about VAR, so let me say, for example, I'm estimating a VAR model, a simple VAR model. I have to make sure that obeys all the assumptions that a regression model is usually is assumed to. So for example, I should see whether there is any uh, heteroscedasticity, there is any normality issue and so on. I can just, for example, go with that and I just 
let me see for example uh, which one is actually working no cross sectional terms and because my data is uh, time series data there is no cross section so i can just use this test and i can just uh, find out the hypothesis whether there is no cross sectional equation there is heteroscedasticity or no heteroscedasticity we just need to remember the null hypothesis and then p values and looking into these, these p values you can just find out whether to accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis so the main test is actually this you can just look into this and we can just find out whether we need to accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis so for example we can just look into other tests i would go to normality and i can just for example cholesky covariance and then test it up and we can find out different other statistics we can just use it and conclude it and we have to make sure that our system of equation that we are using for uh, writing up our uh, systems uh, like thesis and so on there should be no violation of the assumptions if there is any violation of the assumptions we would have to solve that by adding more legs by adding more variables by increasing or changing the data structure and so on so there are the common strategies that we need to do with that and similarly once i'm done with the var and co integration for example i would be estimate a vecm model for that and i then once it is done for example for the vecm is done is completed i would also be able to test all the assumptions for this model exactly i did it for the other one for example with the heteroscedasticity with the normality etc for example and similarly the other test that i can do with it and i would just for example uh, find out whether there is any relationship or no relationship and so on so all the tests that are applicable to ver vecm i have to produce the evidence and i have to solve for that and once it is done co integration is produced vecm is produced we can identify for example whether there is any forecasting feasibility of the model or not i would just for example go to view and then use the impulse responses so impulse responses might be produced for all the variables or the other variables and i would interpret most of the times this if i'm using for example i want to see the predictability of the models so most of the times uh, uh, that impulse response is really confusing so for example i would just uh, look into one of this model so for example if i just maximize that the size of the variable so i can identify that this is the response of debt to debt and similar that is the same variable and we know that both for example the time series data contains the short run effects and long run effects of the variables on each other and also we identify from the var and simply from the vecm the short run of the equations we identify that legs of the same variables are also determining the future values of the variable so we can also find out the impulse responses for that but that are usually uh, uh, coming up to the stability over the long run and similarly some variables are showing that they are moving upward so that is actually a very simple interpretation for that that we use we need to use let's say for example if i change one variable that is for example response of debt to gfc so it means that if i change D gfc by one unit of the standard deviation of the variable what will be the effect of that uh, change of one standard deviation in gfc over the debt variable that is the dependent variable if i look into it i can see that it is increasing over the time so that means that the effect is a uh, uh, divergent it means that gfc has a positive effect over the uh, short run or some time periods and then it is coming up but overall i can see that um, when i change gfc my debt will be increasing for example it is positively increasing or decreasing and so on i can interpret this one it says that when i increase for example gdp is increased then i can see that debt is initially decreasing and then over the time it is increasing and so on upward and similarly other variables one by one we have to look into it so a simple trend that you need to follow whether it is increasing or it is for example decreasing so that is what we have to identify so uh, that is exactly one of the part that we need to remember and we have to identify that so once it is done we can for example identify the variance decomposition as well and i would just for example identify the same discussion over that and it is also for example if i uh, identify the errors for example into the equations i can decompose it into different um, specifications of so let's say for example if i just change one of the equations if i just bring one response one change in the res responses of the variables what is the response of the other variables as well so for example person change in um, date variance 
due to the other. For example, that is the same thing we did with the GF uh, impulse responses. That is, the response should be behaving in mostly similarly for both the various decomposition in the IRF. And similarly, I can find out that when I change GFC, then the variations are the changes in the date variable will be positive and that should be accumulated positively. And the others might be interpreted exactly similarly, whether it is increasing or decreasing over the time. So, and the key point with this uh, impulse responses and various decomposition is that to see when I change something today, what will happen in the future. So most of the times with the macroeconomic policy making, we are using VAR systems. And why we use VAR system? Because we can identify the IRF and various decompositions that tell us that if we change something within the system of equation for the macroeconomic model of the society, if some variables are changed, what will be the behavior of the other variables? So then the macroeconomists are making policies and they're designing to control this effect or maximize some effect within this model. So this is, for example, the key uh, element within the time series econometrics and whenever we are talking about macroeconomic policies. Uh, so that is the VAR and simply the IRF and various decompositions. So when it is done and we have uh, assessed that all the models are assuming, uh, are behaving exactly according to the assumptions, we can just write down the results and we can write down our results chapter for the thesis or uh, we can write down the results chapter for our research articles and so on. And the ARDL is following the same thing and I would just introduce you to the ARDL equation from this VACM part. And if I look into the structure of the VAR and the co-integration vectors, and I would look into again with the structure of the order of integration. And let's say, for example, I would not test, I assume that some of my variables are actually I not and some are I one. So if that is the case, it means that I do not have same order of integration. And I have a mixture of the two order of integration. So if this is the case, in that case, actually ARDL is applied, and that is what we usually know from different reading. And why we actually use ARDL and that kind of equations, if we read the paper from Pesaran, we find out the set of equations that they have proposed to use, and they have called it ARDL, that is auto-regressive distributed legs. And that is, for example, again, that is using the same dependent variable, they are using the legs of the dependent variable, they are using the legs of the independent variables, and they are using the differences of the variables. This setup of the equation possess some properties that actually we need to find out within this equation as well. And because we have some uh, integrating vector here, and this setup of the equation would not behave the same thing. So I would just, for example, look into the equation of ARDL from EBUS, and if I just uh, estimate, for example, in VAR here, I would just click, for example, let's say I would close this again, and I would open my data again with an equation system. For VAR in co-integration, we open is VAR, and for ARDL, we open is equation. So I would open that with is equation, the dependent variable in your independent variables with the intercept and so on. You can add intercept or remove intercept term and you can just set up the part of the equation. So you can just click on the method and then select auto regression, auto regressive distributed leg models from here. And we can just, for example, find out how it is working. And I can just, for example, propose three legs or two legs somewhere or two legs somewhere. And similarly, other options that we want to use. For example, model selection should be based on Schwarz criterion, whether you want to correct for heteroscedasticity and so on. So we also know that white covariance matrix is used to control for heteroscedasticity in the system. We can just, for example, select it like this. And once it is done, we can just uh, proceed with the results and I can just the same thing that is adding intercept, adding uh, time trend and so on. And for example, I just use one of them, for example, linear trend as well. I can just add it, but I would just, for example, use with the rest constant options. Up. So I would just estimate that equation and if I just look into the basic results, I do not see any specification of the ARDL. As I discussed that ARDL contains legs of the dependent variable, legs of the independent variables and differences with legs of the dependent and independent variables. So that should be allowing us to identify the part of the equation. So let me see, for example, when I just uh, look into the representations, how do I actually find that interpretations in my equation? And so I can find out that uh, that is that, and I can find out it is the dependent variable, 
and it is leg of the dependent variable that is another leg of the dependent variable and so on some other variables that i can find it from here and if i just look into uh, the definitions of my ardl and it is exactly the same definition let me find out another way to identify how it looks like i would click on view and then for example i would just look into coefficients of diagnostics and then co-integration graph and so on i can find out but if i just click on long run form and bounce test i can find the exact specification of the equation so now i can see that i have both the long run equation with the level of the variables and similarly i can see the differences of the variables that i can that i can use with the short run equation and that is actually the error correction and that is also the error correction and as i already talked about that that would be the part of a long run equation and that would be the part of short run equation in my vecm model and in ardl we have the same thing and we can identify the long run equation in the short this is the long run equation and this is the short run equation so this is actually a, that uh, error correction specification that is again a modified version of the VECM and why we use VECM uh, and why we use ARDL the basic difference is exactly in the order of integration of the prerequisite variables in the model and sometimes uh, a question is asked whether uh, I can use for example if I have one variable all my variables are I1 can I use ARDL that is a simple answer yes we can identify ARDL has an advantage on simple VECM that it can find out the solution whenever we have, for example, this kind of a setup when all the variables are of mixed order. And it has one limitation that if one of these variables are, for example, I2, I would be unable to find out that solution. And Pesaran in 2001 paper has shown the same thing that a solution is not feasible and pos possible for that kind of observations with that. So once it is, for example, identified, we have estimated our short run and long run equation using ARDL. We can also produce the same results that I already produced, for example, with heteroskedasticity and so on with other results. Um, we can just do the same test um, and find out the solutions. Um. So we have to make sure that the estimated model does not violate any of the assumptions. It is stable. It can be trusted for forecasting and predictive models. And simply, um, the objective of this time series analysis is actually to forecast future and predict future because macroeconomists and other, society, and other fields of the like finance and similarly investment, the models are used to predict future. So if that model is not, for example, behaving stably, we would not be able to believe in that model. So the key point, whenever we are talking about in a time series econometrics or time series modeling, we should see that the model that we have created should be stable, that should be consistent, and it should produce consistent and stable predictions as well. So I'm sure that this basic introduction to VAR, VECM, and ARDL would help us. And we can just, for example, talk about that much better. And we can also, for example, uh, I would be actually planning a detailed lesson on that. Uh, for example, ARDL, how to do that ARDL and why to do that ARDL in some mathematical discussion over that as well. And next week, and I'm sure that that would be much useful for that to understand from this very basic tutorial on ARDL and VR, etc. If you have any question, you can just send me a text message. You can just find out a text message option on your screens. You can just send me a text message. If you want to speak something, you can just ask directly any question. Okay, Zarima, do you have any question related to VAR, VACM, or ARDL? Uh, yes, I'm just uh, typing right now. You can you can speak. Uh, we will see the uh, question of, in the recording as well. You can just speak, and I would answer it. Uh, okay. Um, when we test variables for unit views, uh, uh, does it make sense? Uh, when we choose intercept or trend and intercept or just trend, uh, yes. how we can decide? Yes, that is uh, that is very simple question actually. Let me give you one uh, point that I actually usually when I was I'm teaching time series econometrics and I actually plan or like this. Uh, I create a very basic plan, and you can identify, for example, let's say if the pen begins. Okay. So I have a, a time series graph, for example, for any variable like say x. If I just uh, have the data like begins with this sum, 
equator. And if I just, for example, rewrite an equation for this, let's say, for example, I write that equation on the screen as well. If I just write an equation for x, like let's say I want to write an equation for dx uh, is a part of, for example, that is again with b and similarly legs of the equation and so, so on. And I just want a simple equation that is not any, for example, unit root. And that is a very closely a unit root equation actually. If I just want, for example, to write this equation, and I can see that this is actually y equal to a, when all the other options like all the variable values are equal to zero. So if I just, for example, make this part of the equation equal to zero, I would see that my this part of the equation that is actually y, the dependent variable is equal to a. So if this is the case, then it means that if my variable begins with some positive value or some negative value, so negative values mean that is less than zero here, the origin, so it might begin here as well, then I might be uh, uh, thinking about to add intercept in the equation. One part of the question, so for example, when to use uh, intercept or not intercept, but for example, if I just clear it, let me just, for example, clear some part of the equation. So let's say, for example, uh, I type it again and my variable is think like starting like here. So then what would be the value of my A? So if it begins here, I would say that uh, Y would begin zero. So this would also be zero when my this part of the equation is actually zero. So that means that when I do not think to include intercept in the equation, I assume that my dependent variable is starting at zero at the time when the time is here. So it means that when time is zero here, initial time period. So during my initial time period, if the value starts at zero, then I would not include intercept in my equation. If I think that the initial value of the dependent variable, for example, is not equal to zero, but something like it begins from here or anything something like about zero, then I should think to add uh, intercept as well. The second part of the equation is when to add a uh, trend in the equation. And it is very simply uh, possible. For example, just me, let me clear it and redesign the same. Let's say, for example, my equation is like this. Okay. If you can just guess what is the time pattern of this variable? Is it, for example, changing constantly across time? Simple question that answer the same question. If I can guess from my time series graph, like, let me plot another graph at that. So, for example, let's say one graph is this. For this graph, I can guess that uh, the value of y might change constantly over time. That means that if I just uh, divide this variable into equal parts in time, I can see that change in y will be almost equal. So if that is the part of the system, for example, I can predict and I can guess that y is changing equally across time periods, then it means that I can add trend. If I get, get something like this, like uh, I do not think whether that is changing over the time or not changing over the time, then I would be thinking that there is no need to add time trend in the equation of testing unit root. Actually, a unit root is just, for example, an equation of y variable with its own values. So with its own values and with time trend as well. So that means that I have to think accordingly. So uh, that's, that's the reason why I should uh, look to graphs. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Initially, initially you have to look into the graphs. And also, I also, also is, gave you a point that you have to think, for example, if t is equal to zero. So that is means the initial value of the time period. So what is actually the value of y? That is the variable. If it begins, for example, with something other than zero, then again, we have to think like we can add a trend, with intercept and not trend. But the trend is actually seen from the graph whether it is linear. So as much as linear it is, that much our trust should be that we should add trend in the equation. Okay, th thank you. And uh, my second question is um, how I can choose uh, the number of flags? Exactly. That is one of the key questions that I think I, I did not mention that. Um, uh, 
let me uh, give you one more equation uh, and let me write down that on my VAR uh, that should be on the let me remove this screen and let's say for example I have one equation that is for y and I would say for example again with um, x w and z and plus error term so let's say for example I would add uh, one leg here of all the variables let's say so this is one equation and I also talked about something like consistent and uh, efficient model that can be trusted for the future so uh, as much as we include variables in the model the working of the model is changing and I would for example write the same thing here and I would change for example two and so on I would make another model with three so let's say I have these three models. So my trust is actually based on something hidden in this model. So for example, my basic question, a very non-technical question is how much I can trust this simple model with one leg as compared to, for example, this model. So if this model contains some information, so for example, I would say information contains. So what is actually that is an information criteria we call it so how much information this model contains so let's say for example i would say it is 200 so that is for example a simple number that is i have not uh, talked about the criteria i would interpret that criteria later on i would show you how to do that in eviews and i would just for example mention with the, each model the contents of the information And simply another with this let's say for example one model contains 300 and this model contains 250 so it, it is not necessary that if we add more legs into the model the content of the information will be increasing so I can see that there are three the, the simple thing that I should remember that the con if information content of the model is more I would select it so based on this simple criteria with more contents in the information so what is actually that content of the information the explanatory part of the equation so sometimes in OLS we talk about the R square so if R square is high our trust in the model is high and similarly if information content in the model is high my trust in that model should be high so actually they, the, the different criteria that we talk about is talking about the same thing but as we are not uh, getting the same R square from the VAR like we do in OLS equation or the simple regression models so we have to find out alternative criteria so like for example we use AIC and we also use VIC HQIC and similarly LL so these are all different criteria that determine the information content in the models so we call it information criteria for example a Kaike information criteria that is by S Ashtawar that is also SBIC for example sometimes it is called SIC and similarly HQIC so these are some of the information criteria that are used to determine the uh, leg structure of the model so it means that you can use one leg then two legs then three legs but you have to use a model that is selected on the basis of this model and also one more part for example if R square is high then I would see that residual content of the model would be less so these models are actually based on the residual contents of the model so that means that as much is these value of the criteria are high so for example I would talk about actually this if the residual contents of these criteria that is for example information criteria is less that model should be trusted so within these models so for example I would talk about if it is information criteria is 200 then I would say that its information criteria should be for example minus 200 let's say and similarly I would add the same information criteria to other things so that is for example minus 300 and so on I would use minus 250 so you can see that information contents and information criteria are actually working in opposite direction with information criteria negatively highest that means that information content of the same model would be highest so I can simply develop that criteria that I would select the, that leg of the model, a model with that structure of the leg that gives me with the least value of the information criteria. So let us say, for example, if I just look into 
different models if i just estimate a var let me just close it and i would just estimate the same equation with a var setup and i would just use for example var with four legs and then i would just click on view leg structure and then leg length criteria so i can just use for example five or four legs um, and i can see the leg structure of the variables um. so for example i can use any of these leg, leg structure so do you see that for example if i just select for example the leg one that means that no leg in the model the information contained from different criteria are given but whenever i see that selected leg is four for example then if i just look into the information can criteria value that should also be the least one so for example you can see that uh, according to aic when i select four legs then the aic value is 141 and it is the least value but when i use schwarz criteria or the bayesian criteria that is for example giving me this value so that is means that two legs so but still my key point is that if I just use this value, it should be the least value among the values in the reported table. So that means that I have to use the same logic that I actually do with this content of the information. Is it okay? Uh, so in this in this example, uh, I should use like four. Yeah, exactly. So it is up to, for example, if I use AIC or SIC, you have to use any one of this. And the objective of the two criteria are different. For example, one is giving you the parsimonious. So that means that uh, a model with least number of variables in the model. So because if, for example, if I just use two legs, I would reduce number of variables in the VAR model. But if I use, for example, with four legs, I would add two more legs to each of the variable. So number of variables in my model would be different. So a parsimonious model in information criteria based that is a rich model should be our efficient model should be a different criteria so that is up to you which one of the criteria aic or sic you use so if your model is to identify a simple model with least number of uh, dependent variables independent variables in the ver then i would use sc but if i want to use for example a simple model with rich content then i would use aic And uh, the last question about uh, the diagnostic tests. Um, uh -huh. What if one, one of the tests um, is not, the result is not that we want? Uh, can we still use no. the results? Uh, of the actually, no, actually, the simple answer should be no. For example, if I just uh, uh, give you a simple, like, that is the non econometric point of view. If you just purchase a product, for example, you just uh, bought a basket of fruits. Uh, and there is the, the, the shopkeeper tell you that one unit of the fruit is, uh, for example, you can say that it is not good. Would you accept that basket? No. Would you accept it? Uh, no. 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 No, yes, because you would not accept that basket with at least one unit that is, for example, not good and rest of the fruit is very good. So that means that if we accept a model based on different criteria to be good, but one criteria is not uh, following, so they, I would still not accept that model. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problems. So let, let us make, for example, the, the final steps in VAR and VACM on the Strata as well. We can do that very easily. And I can just, for example, use that multivariate and so on. I can find out from the VACM. And similarly, I can find out uh, that for integration rank of a VACM and so on. I can just find out VACM from the same menu. And I can just select my variables. As I already discussed that we just need, for example, select the variables and simply that should be trade here yes i selected my variables i can uh, identify the rank of the equations i already discussed about regs and similarly i can add number of uh, legs into that whether i need to add trend or constant and no constant and so on and similarly i can just for example uh, run that equation and i would be able to identify that and uh, with the uh, a difference uh, in that, for example, if I just use a VECM and state and e views, I can see that uh, an e views that a long run equation is reported uh, about the topic, um, about the results of the VAR and VACM, um, and the short run equations are given in the end of the results. Um, but in state, um, I can see that 
the results that are for example for the short run equations with the co-integration vector is given for example at the bottom and the short run equations are reported for each of the variable from the var at the start of the equation in summary of the results are reported in the start of the, the top of the results and risk of the interpretation in discussion is exactly same thing and we just need to identify for example the situations where we want to do that and again we we would have to test the same assumptions in we should ensure that assumptions are actually following and we have no problem with the estimated model and i'm sure that uh, this simple tutorial would uh, help us begin thinking about uh, like uh, very non formally thinking about these technical questions and we might find solutions very easily for that okay so uh, I think it is sufficient for today and next week I would be planning or in the next two weeks I would be planning a, a very technical uh, session on ARDL and NARDL. I'm sure that uh, you would also attend that and we would learn from the questions from each other and thank you very much for the time being. Okay, thank you very much for uh, such informative webinar and uh, are you planning to uh, make webinar on um, cross-sectional data? Yeah, I would if, if you just, for example, if you just let me know what kind of uh, the topic or econometric model or regression model you would need, I can just help you with that uh, on a different session. But next uh, next two weeks, I'm planning a session on specifically on ARDL because that is a little bit different and uh, we just need, uh, and we see that there are many applications of ARDL these days. And NARDL is also becoming very rich these days. So I would be planning a new session on NARDL actually and that is a part of the ARDL session as well. So uh, on uh, the first week or the second week of September, the, the weekend of the se week September, we should meet again and we can discuss that. Okay, thank you very much for such information. No problems. Anyone else, if you have any question, you can just send me a chat or you can just send me an email. And if you need anything, for example, in private, you can just send me an email a problem. I can give you a, a private discussion. We can just have a a private session on that and we can just discuss that and thank you very much for uh, coming up today okay thank you bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. thank you okay bye bye and make, uh, make sure that if i do not send the uh, recording of the uh, session uh, just remind me in email i would send it in the evening then and i'm sure that it should be processed within the, within the next two or three hours and then i would email it but still, if I do not email, you just send me an email, uh, a quick reminder for that. Thank you very much in advance oh. for that. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.